All right, to get us started here, what we're going to look at today is how we determine if something is a function or not. So we have three methods that we use for determining whether something is a function or not. The first method that we're going to talk about today, and you can write this in your notes as you're watching, is we're going to determine it from a table. So we have two different ways, three different ways rather, of determining it. The first one is from a table. So we'll be comparing tables and looking at those tables and determining whether or not it's a function. The next way we can determine if something is a function is by looking at a mapping. So a mapping is going to be a diagram that we'll look at here in a bit. So a mapping is the second way. And the last way we'll be looking at one is from a graph. So if you need to take a second, press pause and write those in on your notes. So let's jump straight in. Um, the first way is from a table. So the key here is to look at your table of um, points. And we're going to go ahead and create a random list of points here. So for the first one, let's just throw in some numbers. And it honestly doesn't matter what numbers we use. But how about we go with 4, 2, um, maybe 6, maybe 8, and maybe 25, just to throw in something else a little bit bigger there. So with that table, when we look at that table, all we have to do, really the only thing that we need to pay attention to is whether or not any of these values right here. So those right there, we're looking at if any of those values repeat themselves. So that's what's going in our blanks here. See if any of the x values, okay, x values repeat, okay? So if any of those x values repeat, see if any of the x values repeat. So in this particular case, do we have any repetition? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So because there's no repetition, so no repeats, Right, because there's no repeats, in this particular case, yes, this is a function. Because none of the x values repeat themselves, this is definitely a function. But if you look down below here, let's create another table. How about we have negative 1, negative 2, let's plug in 0, 4, um, whatever we want here, two, let's go with another four, and another um, zero, okay? So maybe in this particular case, well, let's not do zero here for that last one. Let's, instead of doing zero for that last one, let's do um, three, okay? So with that table of data here, we look at our x values once again, right? Once again, we look at our x values, and when we look at these x values, we honestly don't care what the y values are. When we look at our x values, we notice that we do have a repeating x. We do have a repeating x. So in this particular case, our x value of negative 2 repeats itself. So because our x value of negative 2 is repeating itself, this would actually know this would not be a function. So our answer down here below is that no, this is actually not a function. No, no, no. But the one thing that we don't care about is we don't care that our y, our y values repeated. We don't care that our 4 and our 4 repeated itself. So it does not matter. That's what's going on in our blank here. It does not matter. It does not matter if the y values repeat. That doesn't matter at all, okay? So if the x values repeat, it does matter. If the y values um, repeat, it does not matter. Let's move on very quickly. We're going to look at a mapping. So if you need to, press pause. But if, now we're going to look at a mapping. So on the mapping, what this is really saying over here on the left-hand side is this is mapping 6 to 36, so what that means, we, the way we would express that is we would express that as f of 6 equals 36. That's really what this is saying, okay? So 
on this end, we could ask ourselves a lot of different questions. But the main issue here is this. The analogy is that on a mapping, we have to pretend that these are all people, all right? The, all of these numbers here are people. And all of the number, numbers in my Y category are parties, different parties that you can go to, okay? So here's the issue. In this particular case, let's think about it. Can two people, can two people both go to the party at number four's house? Well, yes, not a problem. That's great. So this, no problem at all. These people can go to these parties. Four can go to 16's party, not a problem. So this, yes, this is definitely a function, right? But if you look over here on our second map, we have the person four is trying to go to negative five's party and trying to go to positive five's party. He cannot be in two places at one time. So this right here isn't possible, which means this is no, this is not a function, okay? Not a function, all right? So our conclusion is here that what we're, what's allowed to happen, okay, what's allowed to happen is we're allowed to have uh, more than one person going to the same Y, more than one X going to the same Y, but we can't have one X going to two different Y's. So our conclusion here is that each X value, each X value can only, can only have one, can only have one friend. So that's interesting. You can only have one friend, all right, one friend's party that you're going to, but each Y value, each Y value can have as many, as many friends as they want, as many friends as they want. So four can only go to one person's house, but this four here can have as many friends as he wants to come through. All right, so that's going to take us to our second option. The last option is the easiest one. It's called the vertical, vertical line test. So basically what the vertical line test is, it's a vertical line, exactly like you see here, a vertical line that moves back and forth across the um, graph to prove that something is a function or not. So what we do is to be a function, this blue line, the blue line, um, should only touch or cross. So, whoops, this is moving. Should only touch or another word we could say would be cross the red line, how many times? One time. Can only touch or cross one time. So if we look at our graph over here, it's only touching one time right there at that green dot. It can only touch one time. Um, so let's look at a few examples. If you look right down below over here, okay, on the right-hand side, if you look at this one, this is not a function because our, fun our, our vertical line is touching twice. Once right here, once right there. In fact, it's touching three times. So it's hitting that blue line three times. So this is not a function. So let's look at these quick graphs right here. Would this be a function? What do you think? Yes or no? How many times did it hit? Only one time. So yes, this is a function. Um, what about right here? Would this be a function? Yes, this would be a function. How about right here, num this one right here? Would this be a function? No, it's hitting three times, so that's a big no. This would not be a function. How about this one on the bottom left, right here? Would this be a function? No, it would not. It crosses one more time, so nope. And last but not least, would this be a function? Yes, this would be a function. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our lesson on what makes something a function or not. Good luck, and we'll clarify if you have any questions when I get back.